Welcome to the second part of this video series where we're looking at making a steampunk mask. In the previous part of the video I put the mask together and sanded it down to a nice smooth finish. In this video we're going to start off by looking at painting up the mask. I mentioned in the previous part of the video that this mask is going to have a uni inject design to fit in with my friend's Imperial Etheric Airway steampunk troop. So what I'm going to be doing here is giving this uh, quite a few layers of spray paint to create that look. However, before I do that, I want to add in a degree of weathering to the mask. And the way I'm going to do that is to make it look as though some of the paint has chipped away and you can see the metal below. Now I've done this on various other projects in the past and um, I speak about it in quite a lot of detail in this video so I'll put a link in the description and you can look at that if you'd like some more detail on this process. But basically what I'm doing here to start with is to paint in some metal details on some of the edges of the mask. So the idea is that once this is completely painted there'll be some of the paint chipped away and you'll see this metal showing through. And that just gives it the look as though it's been beaten up a bit and that it's been used and worn. So now that I've got my metal pieces painted in, what I'm now going to do is add a masking agent. Now I'm using something called Maskal, which is basically like latex, it's made by Humbrol. However, there are a variety of other techniques that do the same thing. I've heard of people using mustard and toothpaste and things like that to mask off the areas they want. Um, I haven't tried those ideas, so but I, I do intend to. Given that this is going to be handled quite a lot and there's going to be quite a lot of masking tape applied to this, I'm not going to use toothpaste or something soft because I need the masking agent to actually stay in place while I do all of my masking and all of my spray painting. So what I'm doing is just putting the mask all where I want the paint to chip away and once I've got all the additional layers of paint on top of this I'll then rub at the paint and and where the mask is, the paint will flake away and we'll be able to see our metal below. I've also found that using a sponge is quite a good way of getting a random look to this. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm just sort of dabbing this on, trying to get a random pattern. So my masking agent is now all in place and now moving on to spray painting my first layer. Now what I'm using here is high coat acrylic paint and it's important that these are acrylic. Part of the weathering process I'll do once I've got all of my spray paint on this piece is to use some oil paints and some solvents to create some washes of colour over the spray paint. So because this is an acrylic spray paint I found that it's quite hard wearing and it won't react with solvents. So the white layer of spray paint is now dried and as you can see I've begun masking off the area where the first additional layer of paint is going to go. Right, so there's the first uh, pass of colour and um, you can sort of see the uh, basic idea where this is going. I suppose if I was a football fan I could just leave it like that but um, I'm going to go for the whole Union Jack. So a few more layers of paint to go yet. And it's just the same process throughout here really, mask off the areas you uh, don't want to get paint on and um, spray paint away. Right, so that's my final pass of paint and I'm just peeling off the masking tape there. And as you can see here, I'm having a go at peeling away some of the masking agent to reveal the metal paint below. So the next step with this is to give it a bit of weathering. Now I don't want to go too crazy with this, but I do want it to look as though it's had a bit of life prior to my wearing it. So I'm just having a brief go with some sandpaper here. I don't want to overdo it, but I don't want it looking entirely perfect. So as I mentioned, the last step in the weathering process is to give the mask a couple of layers of oil paints. So the idea is that every time you put the paint on, it just sort of feeds into the small scratches and indentations and things like that on the mask. So the highlights get wiped away, but the indentations retain some of the paint. And that just sort of replicates the way dirt and other things might get worked into the mask over the years. I'm thinning this down with white spirit, which is otherwise known as mineral spirits in other countries. And this is where the fact that I've used acrylic spray paints comes in handy. If these were a solvent based spray paint you might find that the white spirit started reacting with the spray paint and coming off as you were brushing it. Um, obviously that would be a bit of a disaster because it would ruin your paint scheme. So using acrylics is quite handy and this stuff actually is really really tough. I think it's intended for cars so I guess that's why. So there we go there's my finished weathered piece. So as you can see we've got some paint that's 
scraped away on the edges. I've also got some small scratches and indentations and things like that on the mask itself. I've also got some layers of dirt, so that's brown and black oil paints which have been worked into the details of the mask. So I'm quite happy with that. It doesn't look too beaten up, but it does look like it's had a bit of life prior to my wearing it. Now that I have the main components of the mask underway, I need to start thinking about the leather mask that all of these pieces will be attached to. So my initial thought was to make a pattern of my head. So what we're doing here is covering my head in cling film and masking tape. We're then gonna cut that off and use it to make a pattern that I can use to sew up some leather into the correct shape. So once I'd got this off my head, I started cutting it into different pieces and started making some templates so I could then transfer to some material. I must admit, I'm not that good at sewing, so this was a bit of a shot in the dark for me. So as you can see, this is a piece that came up and it's sort of looking right, but I just wasn't quite sure that it was actually going to work. After a while though, I just decided to just have a go straight with the leather. So what you can see is I've got some Nappa leather here, which is quite a nice um, color. So as you can see here, I've sort of started shaping out pieces of leather onto the mannequin and pinning them in place. After a lot of back and forth, this actually worked out okay. So that's how it looks with the piece of the mask in place. So I think we're sort of traveling in the right direction. One element that I do want to include in this project, which is something that I've never used previously, is an Arduino. So what this is, is a small programmable computer that you can basically configure to do anything. Now, I haven't done any serious electronics in about 20 years, so this is a bit of a learning curve for me, but I thought I may as well start somewhere. So what I've done is to buy a kit, which has loads and loads of different components and some ready-made projects. I figured that was the easiest way to get into this. As you can see in the sketch, the mask has got these sort of flaps on the top and side. I was sort of thinking they might be like aerofoils or something like that. So what I want is for these to move when I move my head. So what I'm hoping to do is set up a tilt switch so that when I tilt my head, the flaps move in a pre-programmed sequence. So my first attempt was using some pre-installed code to just make a servo move back and forth. So that looks pretty good. I think this thing is uh, quite small, but I think it's strong enough to actually move these flaps. They're only made of uh, thin styrene plastic, so that shouldn't be too much force required. My second attempt here is, as you can see, I've got a tilt switch on the end of the wire here. When I move the tilt switch, the servo moves back and forth. Um, what I did here was literally just to take some code from the web and then splice that together with the pre-installed code that made the servo move. So that was fairly easy to do and it seems to be a good demonstration of principle. So I'm still waiting for some servos to arrive so I'll be doing a little bit more work on this once they have. So the next thing I need to think about is adding some additional details to the mask. And I always wanted to have some form of mechanical contraption on the back of the head. Now I mentioned I was thinking about putting an Arduino in this mask. Now the problem with that is I need somewhere to actually store it. The leather mask is actually very skin tight, so there's no room for anything to really go in it other than maybe some thin wires. So I need something somewhere to hold a circuit board and battery. So as you can see, there's the Arduino. So it's not huge, but it's big enough. So I need to hold that in something. So I happen to notice that the plastic pint glasses I've been using just to hold water and various other things have quite a nice sort of stepped pattern to them. So I was thinking, well, maybe I can use one of those. Now they're a little bit too big and they're also a bit flimsy, so I can't use that outright, but I think they are big enough to hold the Arduino. So what I decided to do was to pour some resin into one of these pint glasses and to slosh it about on the inside while it dried. This is sometimes referred to as roto casting or slush casting, the idea being that you just slush the material around on the inside of the mold and it drives around the inside. So I've let that dry and as you can see the Arduino will fit inside and it also means I've retained the stepped pattern that I quite liked. It also means that this is now much stronger than the flimsy plastic pint glass. So what I'll need to do is peel off the rest of this plastic. I think um, because the resin heats up a little bit when it cures, I think the plastic is actually stuck to it. So it's a little bit difficult to get this off but it is slowly coming off. Right, after a bit of sanding, this is what we've ended up with. So it's still a little bit too big, so I need to cut this down. But I think this is going to be good for the back of the head. 
I was going to reinforce this with some glass fibre in a similar way that I did to the front of the mask. But actually, because the resin is a little thicker here, it's actually quite strong. So it's strong enough for me to just get a jigsaw on it and cut it down to size. Now, I also need to add a surround to it. So what I've got is a curved piece of foam here. What I'm then going to do is cover the whole thing in resin again and a little bit of fiberglass just to give it a bit of strength. The fiberglass should stick to the existing resin that I've got here quite well, so that will make it all one piece. So I've jumped forward a little in time here. So as you can see, I've added some paint and some bolts to the piece now. So you can see that's got a similar color scheme to the front of the mask. What I now want to do is add some additional pieces to the separate side piece that you have there. So what I've done is to buy some CO2 canisters from Halford. So these are intended to uh, pump up your bicycle tire. I need to degas them though. Um, so what I've done is to make this little jig here. And what I'm going to do is use the pedal drill just to insert a nail into the top and release the gas. Now I must admit I wasn't quite sure how explosive this was going to be so the first time I tried it I did hide behind a bit of wood just in case uh, things went flying. As it turns out it's not too explosive but um, if you can have a go at this please do wear eye protection. I do find this quite interesting actually. I'm guessing the CO2 is actually liquid inside the canister. So as you can see, when the gas comes out, the canister cools down incredibly quickly. So I guess because the liquid is changing state from liquid to gas, it's sucking in heat from the surrounding environment and the canister's got really, really cold. Quite interesting anyway, and I never miss an opportunity to do something explosive if I can. So, <laughs> so that was quite fun. So I've now cleaned up my canister and got the label off, um, just dunked that in some white spirit to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is create a sort of a mechanical looking piece for this. Now this red thing is from a deodorant spray can. I always find taking apart the mechanisms for the spray usually yield some quite interesting plastic pieces. So I think that will serve as a nice base for the canister. So as you can see that's going to sit on the extended bit on the side there and the canister is going to stick out. Now I'm not going to use the canister itself, what I'm actually going to do is make a mould of the canister and then cast that up in resin too. The reason for that is because as you can see I've added loads and loads of bits and pieces here to give it a bit more of a mechanical look. But they're not stuck together particularly solidly so I'm not sure this is really going to survive a trip out uh, to the asylum. Also. This is a helmet, it's going to be in my head, so I'm trying to save uh, weight whenever I can. So I think having a metal cylinder on there is probably not heavy in of itself, but once I've added all the other bits and pieces on there, it's going to start getting quite heavy. So having a resin copy of this would be much uh, better. I've also got this mechanical looking thing here, which is the interior drive mechanism from a hard drive. I've added some bolts and things there, so I think that would look quite cool as some form of socket or conduit or something like that. So what I'm doing here is making some surrounds and I'm going to glue all this down to the plastic bases there. What I'm now doing is mixing up some silicon rubber to make a mould. What you do here is similar to the resin, you add a degree of catalyst, mix it up and that causes the rubber to set. So I'm just pouring my catalyst here and mixing up the rubber. Now something I've covered in much more detail in previous videos is degassing the rubber. So when you mix your rubber, air can get introduced into the rubber and that can cause imperfections in your mould. So a way to get around that is to put it into a vacuum chamber and suck out all of the air from the rubber. So that's what I'm doing here. Now this is from a previous video, but as you can see the rubber bubbles up as you suck the air out. So now that I've degassed my rubber, I can pour it over the piece. And what I'm also going to do is put it back in the vacuum chamber and suck out the air once again. So that just means that if any air bubbles have got trapped onto the piece when I poured the rubber in, they'll get sucked away too. Because the detail at the bottom of the piece is quite intricate, you've got all that sort of ribbed cabling and that sort of stuff, there is potential for air bubbles to get trapped here. And I want the finished piece to look exactly like the original. So I've jumped ahead here, but here are some casts of my finished pieces. So as you can see, they're looking pretty good. I can't see any obvious air bubbles or anything like that. So I think they're pretty accurate to what my original pieces looked like. The way I cast these was to mix up some more polyester resin. So the same stuff I use for my fiberglass. But what I did was to put them into a pressure chamber and let them cure under pressure. Now I cover that in much more detail in a previous video. So if you want to know how that's done, please check out my video here. I'll put a link in the description. 
And there's my pieces attached to the back of the mask. So as you can see, I decided to put the sort of valve conduit thing on the end of the pint glass. I thought it looked quite good there. And I've also painted up my canister as well. And so here's what the mask looks like once I've put all of these pieces together. So it's not looking too bad now. I think the paint job really does add a certain something to the mask. There's still a fair bit to do. I've still got to get the Arduino working correctly and I've also got to attach some respirator hoses to the mask. And as you can see, I've added some screw thread connectors there, which I did by drilling some holes in the mask, which was a little bit nerve wracking, but it seems to have come out okay. Once I'd attached those, it also occurred to me, well, they've actually got to go somewhere once, uh, they, once they're attached. So I'm actually going to be creating a fan unit, which will sit on my back, which will direct air through the pipes into the mask. I can breathe okay, but it's really just to sort of keep me cool. Anyway, that's for the next part of the video. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching, I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.